Hi folks! In this video I'm going to show you how to switch between monitors using your tablet if you have multiple monitors. So normally when you're drawing on a drawing tablet you want to have it mapped to a single monitor. However, if you have multiple monitors that can be annoying having to switch back to your mouse in order to access your other monitor. So here we can set one of the buttons on our tablet to do that for us and we'll set it so that it cycles between screen one, screen two, and then both screens so you can access both at the same time, and then back to screen one again each time you press the button. It's a bit convoluted how we have to do this. There are three steps. We're going to create a new script that switches the monitors for us. Then we're going to create a keyboard shortcut or hotkey that runs the script we just created to switch between monitors. Finally, we're going to map one of the tablet buttons to run that keyboard shortcut, which will then run the script to switch monitors. We're going to start by creating the script to switch monitors. So let's create a new text file, and we're going to save it in our bin folder as, let's call it switchmonitors.sh, sh for a shell script. And let's save that here. And I'll put the code in the video description so you can copy and paste it. But you are going to need these two lines right here, which I'll spend a little time explaining at the end of the video. But just so we can get it done, let's save that. Okay, so we have our script. We're going to need to make that script executable. So I'm going to go back to the bin folder and I'm going to right click the script, go to properties. And under permissions, we're going to tick the box, allow executing the file as a program. Okay, let's test that our script works. So let's open a terminal, which you can do with control alt and T. I'm going to run the script by hitting dot slash. As long as we've given the file permissions to execute, then this will work. We can go dot slash and it's in our bin folder and I'm going to type switch. I actually just SW and if I hit tab it should autocomplete because that's the only file I have in there that starts with SW and I'm going to hit enter. And the first thing is I didn't get any error messages so that's a good sign. And if I put my pen on my tablet um, I am on my rightmost monitor now. And if I run that again now oh, here I am. Actually I'm on both monitors. I am crossing over both monitors. And if I run that script again, I'm just hitting the up arrow to get my last command. And if I run it again, here I am. I'm only on monitor one. So monitor one, monitor two, both monitors, back to monitor one again. All right, so our script works. That's pretty good. Now on for part two, which is setting up a hotkey to run that script for us. We're going to do something weird that isn't already used by a lot of programs. So I'm going to use shift control alt m. You can pick something else convoluted that you want. You won't have to remember it because we're going to set it to be one of your tablet's buttons. So let's open the in Ubuntu 2004 at least. Let's open the keyboard shortcuts settings here. And I'm on the keyboard shortcuts. And we can scroll down to the bottom here and you'll see a plus to add a new keyboard shortcut. We can call it whatever we want. Um, let's try switch monitors. And we're going to give it a command. In the command we want to put the script that we just made. But we have to give it the full path to the script. So you'll need to enter something probably like this. So home slash whatever your username is slash bin that's the directory and whatever you called your script which mine was switch monitors so mine was here is age of and you can just confirm that works by copying that and running it in a terminal to make sure it works and does that work yep it's working Okay, enter the shortcut. So uh, Alt M, Shift Control Alt M. Did that? Well, Alt M worked. Let's try that again. Set shortcut, 
Control Alt Shift M. Okay, we got it. Shift Control Alt M. I'm going to hit Add. And now if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see Shift Control Alt M. Well, now let's test that. So I have my hand on my pen. And right now my pen is on my right monitor. I'm going to go Control Shift Alt M on my keyboard. Now I'm on both monitors. Control Shift Alt M. Now I'm on the left monitor. Okay, so obviously that's working. Step two has worked. We can close out of that. Finally, we're going to set one of our tablet buttons to run that hotkey. This should be pretty easy for you to do. It's the same thing you did in one of the previous videos if you've been following along in the series. You just choose a tablet button, figure out the button ID, and then set it to the key combo. Okay, so let's go in to our Xset Wacom script here. This is a really bad name. We shouldn't have called it Xset Wacom. That's actually the command itself. So let's edit our script in the text editor. I already have all my buttons mapped, but I'm going to remap this button here that currently is a control two for some other app that I was using. And I'm gonna reset it. The button ID is nine. I'm gonna reset it from control two to shift control alt M. So make sure you have key at the beginning and you're gonna go shift control alt M. I'm not sure if it matters what order you type these in. Just make sure you have them all. And I'm gonna save that control S or you can hit save. And I guess now we gotta test it. So this is my pen here and I'm gonna hit the button and it doesn't do anything. Why doesn't it do anything? Uh, well, that's actually because I didn't run this script. <laughs> so it's not actually gonna map that button until I run this script itself. Okay, so uh, we need to run our script. So I'm gonna open a terminal with Control Alt T and I'm gonna type dot slash bin slash our script, which is X set. So I can just type the beginning, hit tab to autocomplete, hit enter. And now the button on my tablet should be mapped. So I am on my left monitor. I'm gonna hit the button I know I mapped and there it is. I was hitting the wrong button. So now I'm on the right monitor, I'm on both monitors, and I'm on the left monitor again. All right, that works. And of course, we've already set this up to run when we log in, as long as the tablet has been plugged in. But if it doesn't, I can always just open a terminal, hit the up arrow a few times to find one of my last commands, and run it again. So I mentioned I would explain the script that we're running because they can look kind of scary um, and bash scripting is definitely not my favorite scripting language but we can just run the parts of the command right here in the terminal and see what they're doing so i'm going to open up my switch monitors let's run some of these commands so we know what xset wacom list does we can just paste it in there by the way i'm just highlighting and middle clicking which is a one form of pasting in Linux. So we're, you should already be familiar with this. It's gonna list all of my devices. When I use this, which we call a pipe, what it does is it's gonna take the output of this command, which is all this stuff, and it's gonna use it as an input into the next command. And the next command is cut. Well, what does cut do? Well, cut will slice up a line based on some delimiter. And uh, you might have heard of a comma separated values, a CSV file, and that's where values are separated by a comma. In this case, the, what cut uses by default is the tab key. And there's actually a tab character right there. See, it's not a single space like that is, or like these are, boom, 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 boom. There is a tab character right there. And there's actually another one right there. So when I say cut, it's gonna chop it up into one piece of info two pieces of info, and then a third piece of info. So here, it's saying cut, and the cut command calls each of these pieces a field. So if I say cut, and then I go give it the option of dash F2, it's saying I wanna cut, and I wanna get the second field, which this should be the second one, right? Here's part field one, field two, field three. And remember, it's separating it based on these tab keys by default. 
So let's just do this and see what we get. Huh, pretty cool. For each line, it just cut out the second field. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're piping again, which means we're now gonna take the output of this command and punch it into another cut. This is the same thing, you can see cut, you can see F2, we're gonna take the second piece, but this time, instead of using the tab command, we are going to change the delimiter what we're cutting it on to a single space right here. It says this dash D is a parameter we can use to change the delimiter. Then we tell it what delimiter we want. And in this case, we're giving it just a simple space. And after we chop it, chop it up based on spaces, we want the second field. So here we have some stuff, then we have a single space and then we have the numbers. So what this command should be doing is chopping it right there, right there, right there. This is this would be field one, this would be field two, and since we're saying give us field two, we should end up with just a list of these numbers. So let's try running that whole thing. There we go, not bad, right? Okay, so I'm not gonna explain how the rest of the command is put together. This is a for loop. What it's doing is it's gonna take the number 12 and it's gonna save it into a variable called ID. And then it's gonna use it to run this xset wacom command. And the xset wacom command, which you should kind of be familiar with, it's saying xset wacom set. Now normally when, when we've been doing set, instead of just putting this number, we've been putting this entire thing here. One of the reasons for that is that this doesn't change, but every time you plug in your tablet, these ID numbers could change. But since this script is running each time and checking what the numbers are, it doesn't really matter. So it's gonna say, for example, xset wacom set, and then here, this is a way of saying, use the ID variable. So in the first case, it'll be 12. So it says xset wacom set 12, which is the same as saying that, map to output, next. And you have you may have seen in the last video where I showed how to manually map your monitor using map to output. And then here you'd put like 1920 by 1080. Uh, there's another value that the map to output parameter can accept and that is next. And what next will do is it'll just cycle through all the available monitors. What this does is it'll go down and it'll take all of these and it'll make sure it switches every single one of them to the next monitor. Now really, you only really need to switch the pens to the next monitor. And that's basically what this command is doing. It's going for every number that it finds after chopping up all these lines. Run this command, xset wacom, which is basically this, and it's replacing the ID here with 12. And when I do that, what is 12? 12 is the finger one, so it's not even actually doing anything. What we want here for my testing is 11, so it's really just doing this. There it is. Where am I? I'm on monitor two now. I'm on both monitors, back on monitor one. Okay, we're getting down into the nitty gritty here of what you can do with Xset Wacom. Hope this helps a few people out there.